I've always wanted to become a missionary because the first oblates that I met were missionaries. I mean, Father Paul, who is now the Bishop, uh, Pran Wallace, and uh, Bill, Morel. Um, I mean, all these oblates used to come. And each time I looked at them, I said, I want to be like these guys. I want to be like them. I feel the calling of being a missionary very strong. And I love what I do and I love being across the border and, and being with the people and in, in, you know, in these circumstances. The part of uh, the oblate charism that really speaks to me, of course, is, uh, is, is to be close to the people. Uh, to always remember that, um, that one of the first big steps that, that St. Eugene did was to, to speak the language of the people. I think that's what really what makes us oblate. We're not intellectual people, we're pastoral people, we're close to the people. I try to be present to people. The clinic was established by Bob Callahan as a very small clinic at first, and since then it's become a larger building and service to the people. The clinic includes doctors, dentists, there's a psychologist at the clinic, there's a social worker, and there's also an educational center for students who want to do work on computers and so on. Medically, they can't go to any doctor because here you have to pay right on hand, right on the spot. And if they don't have the money, they can go to the doctor. So we try to help them. Sometimes here in the clinic, sometimes we help them financially if it's an emergency. So all this they wouldn't have if we weren't here. The charism of the Oblis is to serve the poor people. And looking at Kalavo, it's one of the poorest places in Zambia. So being here, in a way I'm also inspired by the words of Eugene, to have that zeal for the salvation of the souls. And the, the, these are the people we are, we are trying to serve. We help them to understand that they are human beings, and then you bring them to that level where they understand that they are, they are Christians. And hopefully, we help them to, to be saints. The national figure of people with HIV AIDS is 16%. It's the highest killer in Zambia. We have 33 beds and we have the possibility to have up to 37 patients. We average between 16 and 22 deaths a month. The Oblets are helping out here. Father Joe, for example, is the chairperson of the board of trustees here. In time and again, they give us financial help. Many patients that come here, they come from families that probably uh, are very poor already. There are cases that they bring because they can no longer take care of them. In a sense, they are abandoned. And the charism of the oblates comes in very, very handy. El Señor esté con ustedes. Everybody brings their gifts, brings their concerns, you know, brings their person, uh, their story. And I think as you honor and treasure each story, I think you learn to live that value of community. You know, like St. Jean said, charity, charity, charity among yourselves. He didn't say first, save the souls, but he said charity, charity, charity among yourselves, and then strive for the saving of the souls. This is the Santa Maria Students Dormitory. It's a dormitory for the girls. The parishioners basically built this through oblate funding and also through some funding that they raised on their own locally. They dug the stones, they dug the sand, they also crushed the stones the right sizes, but also the oblates contributed quite a lot of money to get the building to the stage where we are at. Empowerment of the people is one of our ministries. Eh? We can't just preach the gospel and then uh, without really getting to the ground of the needs that the people need. Eh? And this is one of the great needs for Lukulu. There is no secondary school with a boarding facility in the whole district in this Lukulu parish. So having this uh, building really is a real ministry because then we are really empowering the girl child. The Oblates have so much to teach a diocesan priest like myself about how to do mission and 
for example, I mean, we came ready to go to work. And finally they said, oh, no, 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 you're going to meet the people first. And they introduced us to the community and to the children. And they teach us that the work will always be here, create the relationships. I can't say enough about how grateful we are to the Oblate community for taking on a, a bunch of rookies when it comes to missionary work. We're very grateful. If you go to England, Ireland, Scotland, and you go into every one of the major cities in those places, into the guts of the city where the cops are scared to go, you'll find the Oblates there. And I'm proud of that. I'm proud of our guys around the world. I'm proud of where we are as a community. I'm proud of our work, and I enjoy the work. Eugene de Mazenod came to our parish in 1849 and visited us. And it was very bad. All the immigrants from the famine was there. And he said, something's got to be done for these people. Because Eugene de Mazenod, whatever the poor was, he was there. Serving the gospel as an oblate means serving the world, serving the church throughout the world. There is no limit to where they can serve. It depends on their gifts and their talents. Our men in Brazil and other parts of the world making a huge difference to the lives of people, both at the material level, um, at the human level, um, at the spiritual level. Life is not easy. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. But what makes it nice, what makes it wonderful, is that people love you. And that's so true. I think being clergy, being assigned to something, it's often that we come in with the answers and with you know, the final word. And I think that it has its place and it can be useful, but um, I think oftentimes we, we, we forget to, to really listen and, and share certain struggles. It's not the church of the priest or of the bishop. It's the church of the people. And the people need to be involved. They have to realize it's their church. The reading of today was talking about John the Baptist, how he died for the sake of the kingdom. I said, what a sacrifice that was. So I've given my, my son to the oblates. This is what I've always wanted. This is what I've always dreamed, to become a missionary elsewhere. Because it's, it's that sacrifice part which captivates me and it excites me.